G'day. A few videos back I made a set of lightweight wheelchair ramps and there were a lot of holes in there uh, to reduce weight and one of the comments made was, you know, would they be better or wouldn't they be better off being flared? Uh, and uh, that intrigued me and so I jumped on the uh, CAD system at work at lunchtime and did a few FEA studies. Now FEA is a um, it stands for finite element analysis and it's the way that uh, a lot of modern structural engineering is done. Previously it was done with equations where people would say well here's a here's a thing this long and if I apply this force I've got this uh, equation that someone's worked out which will tell me how much it deflects. With FEA what you can do is you model something in the computer uh, and put appropriate loads and things like that on there and that will um, predict for you what the the behavior of that object is going to be. Now it takes many years of engineering school to actually understand what you're doing. It's one of those things if you put the wrong numbers in you get the wrong numbers out and so this isn't at all about that. This is just a, a, a general discussion of well this is what happens when you when you put um, flared holes versus normal holes versus don't have holes in things and I know I found it a bit interesting so I thought I'd share it with you. This is a basic package that comes with the um, CAD package we uh, we have uh, and this is a typical sort of view it's just a made up part but it's enough to demonstrate uh, a few of the features. Uh, it's a it's a, a, a J-shaped piece made out of a bit of I-beam uh, no particular dimensions the way FEA works is it divides it, the, the part into lots of small cube or tetrahedral elements. It applies forces to them and then through the magic of lots of maths, uh, those all balance out until you get to a, a result. Um, it requires lots of computing power as you can imagine if you have complex parts. Something simple like this isn't too bad but once you start getting brackets with some strange shapes to them, uh, then it gets much more complicated. Von Mises is a, is a theory of uh, material failure and full details of that are available at engineer school. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, it's, it's complicated and, and several years are spent trying to understand that stuff. Uh, the yield strength down here, that's the transition between elastic deformation and plastic deformation. Elastic is when you take the force away it goes back to its original position. Plastic is you take the force away and it stays distorted. It may not be as distorted as much but it still stays distorted. Most people design for uh, uh, up, to, up to yield because people get a bit worried if their cars start taking on strange uh, shapes and things just because they've had a little bit of a, a bump. Um, in terms of the model itself, these green arrows up here are the restraints, so that's basically locked up in that position. Uh, it doesn't move, whereas the purple arrows here are uh, the forces that are being applied. Okay, uh, And typically when you're looking at one of these things, red is bad and um, blue is good, or is better. Now you also have to remember too with this, the accuracy of the results is only as good as the accuracy of the model and the inputs. Um, so if I had the wrong thickness here uh, it might not work as well as um, it should be and uh, most times engineers will verify the results either by uh, testing a physical sample or um, doing a hand calculation uh, you know on, a, on a, a related bit of this and, and working it out. I mean this particular case here it's just a bent beam you could probably do a hand calculation on that and not bother with FEA but uh, when you start getting into some some weird things and strange shapes sometimes um, you can't uh, you can't get away with that and you have to either uh, do some physical testing or, or something like that one thing you may also hear uh, people talking about is uh, a design factor or a safety factor and what that basically means is if it say takes uh, 50 newtons to uh, make something fail um, you will design it or make the design so that it actually takes uh, 100 newtons to fail and you've got a, um, a design factor of 2 there so it's, it's really just a, a multiplier. Uh, I'm only mentioning this just so that people you know understand a bit of this if, if you hear people talking about this sort of stuff. This is another view uh, of the same um, part and you can see there that that bend is more highly stressed than the rest. Now you could reinforce that bend and that's uh, the sort of thing they do on uh, container trucks uh, or, or cranes. Uh, 
this is one that I just pinched off the internet uh, and you can see these strange shaped plates here uh, someone has probably done their FEA analysis and worked out these are high stress areas and so they put these reinforcing plates. You don't need to make the whole thing thick because you know these parts in here could be low stress. So they've got reinforcing plates where they've got things attaching but also where the stresses are going to be high just for whatever reason. Uh, the other reason for making the, the, the plate small like this is just that they're, they're joined on typically with welding. So if you have a big plate that went over you know half this section you're not gaining as much as if you have holes in it or, or cutouts like this to actually uh, attach the plate. So this one is a cantilever beam. Uh, it's around a 75 square, 1.6 millimeter thick aluminium and around about 600 long. Um, I've just got a little nub down here where I'm applying a force and uh, note the, the stress here at the, at the far corners, right? It's in the red, it's not near yield. Um, but if you had a bad weld with this attached to a plate, uh, it could break, okay? The restraints don't move, so there's no material there that's able to stretch and, and spread the load out. Um, the beam is, is probably running at something like 20% of its uh, capacity. Here I've done the same thing but with some holes and they're around 50 millimetres diameter, 80 millimetre spacing and uh, you can see some, some bits of red here at the, uh, the cutouts and this is basically, um, it's more highly stressed because there's less material to carry the load. Uh, it's about 80% of its capacity and if you recall from the previous slide without holes it's around 20%. So you know by taking that material out you've actually significantly increased the stress on the, um, the part even if you have you know lightened it. This is that same part yet again but this time I've flared the holes. I've put a little uh, what would you call it you know upstand whatever there. Uh, there's still some high stress areas present. Uh, the scales on these things automatically adjust, but the stress level is less. So it's about 70% of capacity. So you can see that the, the, the flares are helping by adding a little bit of reinforcing uh, in, the, in the high stress areas. This one is the same beam, but this time I'm putting a torque on it. Um, so, you know, equal and opposite forces here and here. Uh, it's uh, low stress. Uh, this this particular you know bit here is only probably at 10 to 15 percent of capacity. Yeah, ignore that because that's just the added on bit for applying the force. Um, if if this was a, a full blown package, I'd be able to put a torque directly on this part, but because it's not, I've I've just had to put a a bit of a lever on it. This one uh, has got holes in it, and once again, you can see little bits of red around the the holes um, once again because material has been removed and it's probably about 90% of its capacity so once again you can see by by taking that material out you've lightened it but you've certainly increased the amount of stress on the uh, on the part. This one's the same beam with some flares added uh, so once again you've got a high stress area here um, it's it's helps because it reinforces around those holes, but you're still at 86% of the of the capacity of the the beam. So you've you've improved slightly, but you're still um, you know not where you could be. So this is a, a graph that I put together based on those those um, last slides, basically showing the trade-off between the weight loss and the strength. Okay. That 22 is is the yield strength there. So as you're creeping closer towards that, you're you're losing your um, your your margin of uh, of safety. Okay, if you had a, a safety factor of, of around about two, uh, you'd be here somewhere, right? Um, so you know if you added extra holes in here um, to reduce the weight further, maybe some some 16 diameter holes between the 50s, uh, or, or or took a bit off the corners, you know you'd be creeping down here. You know, you'd save your weight, but you'd you'd be getting up towards your um, uh, you know your yield stress. So not necessarily such a wonderful idea. So I guess the question is, well, what could have flared holes? Well. This part here is just a plate. It's got a, a, a 10, millimeter border, 10 millimeter border around it. And uh, I've just applied a uniform pressure to this, okay? And in this particular case, um, the maximum uh, deflection is just under two millimeters. This scale has, I've, I've changed the scale from um, yield uh, or, or stress to um, deflection. 
that's another thing that these packages are used for. And so right in the middle there, it's around about 0.2 of a millimetre, so approximately 8 thou uh, deflection. If you then look at this one, uh, there's some holes here. And uh, because, you know, the way the, 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 the the pressure is applied because you've got less cross-sectional area through here this is actually deflecting a bit more so it's 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 point th nearly 0.3 millimeters or, or 12 thou okay and the so on this particular example uh, flares have been added to the the holes uh, the weights increase slightly because of that but the deflection is down to point 0.06 of a millimetre. So this scale is a little bit deceptive because it auto ranges uh, and so that red is, is the maximum deflection but yeah that's that's way less and that's a bit over 2 thou. So the real benefit in, in flares is um, not so much the strength but stiffening things up and if you go back to the stiffening video uh, the flares are basically increasing the thickness of the material making it making it stiffer that way. Uh, the gain is, is really in saving weight uh, and increase part stiffness but the downside is higher stress levels in the part so you know parts need to be designed and tested with the flares in place rather than adding them later because that could be uh, the difference between a, a part failing and a part um, not failing uh, and another downside I guess to putting flares in is the extra work that's uh, involved with all these holes um, you know there's there's quite a bit of work to to drill them and flare them and what sort of thing so you know it's probably not worth doing for a lot of projects uh, but if you want something that looks cool or alternately uh, you need the the stiffness or the weight saving uh, then flares may be the uh, the answer for you so uh, thanks for watching uh, please share the video and also comment below if this sort of explanatory video is uh, is worth making uh, this is the only topic I could think of doing it for at the moment but uh, if people think it's a, a good idea I'll, I'll keep my eyes open for other topics uh, of, a, of a similar nature that that might be of interest